Hi, my name's Leah and I come to you from Melbourne, Australia at Origani headquarters. So today we're going to be talking, uh, this vlog will be um, based on three surprising natural beauty myths busted. So we're going to talk about those things that, you know, common, uh, uh, commonplace beliefs in the beauty industry um, about natural skincare and natural cosmetics um, that are in fact not true. Um, so first, let me give you a little bit of a background on myself so um, you can understand kind of where these myths are, how, how these myths are being busted. Um, I've been in the beauty industry for close to 20 years. I've worked with companies where we sell lots of different brands and in concepts um, to, through to companies that um, are single branded. Um, I've worked across all different types of um, skincare and cosmetics companies with different philosophies. And I guess having uh, been exposed to thousands of products that have come across my desk over the years as a trainer, um, uh, and also having a direct contact with chemists and formulators and things like that, uh, I've really come to learn what's true and what's not. And, and, and actually using the products as well over the years um, has really been a great uh, way for me to, to source out fact from fiction. So let me start by saying um, there are lots of myths and misconceptions about natural and organic beauty products, especially um, in the market. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So we're all about dispelling those myths and making sure that it's really clear to you um, what's true and what isn't. So the first myth um, is that natural and organic skincare is not as effective as active or cosmeceutical or lab-based design skincare. And this is not true. Um, natural, is gen natural brands are generally, or products are generally perceived as having a softer approach to beauty. Um, uh, and let me just say, long gone are actually the days when choosing green meant sacrificing scientific validation and results. Um, you know, great uh, organic and natural based brands, the really good ones are really pushing the boundaries to, in today's day and age um, uh, of science with delivery systems and ingredients and potency and efficacy of formulations. We're looking at, you know, we, we have got a great access to getting the best of, of, of mother nature essentially and harnessing it with western scientific philosophies to actually get the best out of nature without using chemicals and without using synthetic ingredients and and on all of those other nasties that um, we've come to learn about um, and origami really look at um, biocompatibility that is a real core belief um, that drives our product formulations in the sense that biocompatibility essentially means that an ingredient um, is compatible with us biologically, that the body readily accepts those ingredients and has a, a direct um, causal effect of, of a positive nature. So, you know, natural skincare these days are not, uh, the, the good brands are not soft um, uh, in the sense that they, they have very little effect. In fact, it's quite the contrary. Myth number two, is that all natural skincare is made equal. And that's not the case because natural or organic is a very hazy term um, that's not really, or that's kind of loosely regulated. And you really have to be um, savvy about what is a good brand, a natural brand that really does work on those natural philosophies and is true to them. To, as opposed to other brands that claim they're natural, but they're not really. Um, and I guess my advice to you in order to do that um, is to look at the ingredient list on the box. Look at the quantity of natural ingredients on the box. If there's one or two, it's not a natural product. It may have a natural ingredient, but it's not a natural based or organic, organic based product. Number two, look at the quantity of natural ingredients on the back of the box. You should see a fair number of them. Um, look for positioning. So the more you have at the top of an ingredient list, the more potent those naturally, the more the amount of natural ingredients are in that product. And also look for what's not in it. 
So, you know, uh, chemicals, pesticides, genetically modified ingredients, uh, sodium lauryl sulfate, um, uh, parabens, all those ingredients. If you're seeing them in, 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 on the packaging, then the chances are that the, the product is not organic or natural based. So that's what's um, really important advice for you when you're looking for a really good ethically based natural skincare line that's true to its philosophy. Um, and Origani certainly is, which I'm so proud to, to, to be a part of. And that brings us to our third and final myth um, for this vlog on three surprising natural beauty myths busted. So the third and final myth is actually that uh, mineral makeup is unflattering. And I'll be the first to say that I believed that for many, many years working in uh, the cosmetics industry uh, because I was addicted to liquid foundation and I thought it was the best. And I was sadly mistaken. Um, and it took me a trip to London actually to figure this out. So I was flying to London for work um, to meet a cosmetics company that made really, really good quality mineral makeup. And on the day that I was ready to return to Melbourne from London, one of their makeup artists did my makeup with this powder, a loose powder. And uh, when I looked in the mirror, I thought, wow, it looks lovely. Um, but the realization came when I got off the plane 30 hours later after a big layover, and well, my partner said to me, wow, you actually look really fresh. And I was like, really? Um, no sleep, lots of trouble. Um, anyway, I looked in the mirror and surprisingly so, I actually did look really fresh. Um, so from that day on, I was a big believer in mineral makeup. Now, mineral makeup is um, really beautiful and really flattering on almost everybody. Um, if it's a good quality mineral makeup and if it's applied properly. So the trick is that you need to keep blending to get that really beautiful creamy feel. Um, there's so many benefits to a good quality mineral makeup. I, I don't know where to start. Uh, first of all, it's weightless, so you don't actually feel it on the skin. Second of all, it allows your skin to breathe. So it's like actually, and it's really good for your skin because of all the minerals. So it's actually like skincare, but makeup. Um, it has great stain power. It stays truer longer, so it doesn't turn it like a yucky yellow color um, as you secrete oil. Um, it also absorbs oil. Um, it's sweat proof, so you can go to the gym with a little bit on, etc. or a humid day, great for humid climates. Um, if you have a, a cheeky night where you maybe get to bed a bit too late and you can't be bothered washing your makeup up, which we're all really uh, uh, guilty of at some point, mineral makeup is the best mineral makeup to sleep in if you're going to do it, but we don't recommend it. Um, it won't clog your pores, it's non-comedogenic, which means it's not going to get you know nasties into your pores. Um, and it's all over, all over very, very flattering. It's light reflecting, um, so it makes the complexion look really, really even and beautiful, and it's buildable. So you start off with a small amount, and you can actually pop um, more on according to the uh, coverage that you like. Um, also, it, it doubles as a powder foundation, or it triples as a powder foundation and concealer. So it's really handy just to have your pot of mineral makeup. So, you know, good quality makeup is as good as your skincare, uh, as good as good skincare. Um, and I highly recommend you try a good quality mineral makeup because you will probably never go back if you do. So they are the three, three beauty myths that we've busted today. Um, remember, mineral makeup is really amazing when you've got a good one and you apply it properly. Um, the other myth is that natural skincare is not as effective as active skincare. Well, absolutely, that's not true. Um, if you get a good, really good quality natural or organic skincare. Um, and the third one is that it's um, made equal. It's actually not. You have to look for the good ones and you have to look at the ingredient listings um, to make sure you have a good one. So we hope you've enjoyed today's vlogs. There is a written form of this blog, uh, vlog um, on our beauty advice section of our website, www.origani.com.au. Um, enjoy exploring it. There's lots of really cool information there and we look forward to seeing you guys soon. Take care.